Yes, welcome to She. We are super excited for another day with you. So thank you so much for being here. If this is your first time, please drop on the comments new so we can uh, invite you to our Facebook group, WhatsApp group. Hopefully jo you join on the, what's, uh, on the waiting room, our WhatsApp group. We're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. So thank you so much for being here. She builds, she owns, she invests, she is me, and she is you, she is your daughter, she is your sister, she's all of us, so super excited to be here. We are on a mission to help 1 million women create generational wealth through real estate, while we foster personal, professional, and spiritual growth. Of course, we can do it alone, so all of you need to come on board. Thank you so much because together we can impact and make better communities. So thank you so much for being here. Just let you know, we are live on Facebook. Uh, so smile, look pretty as always. And just a quick disclaimer, we are not financial advisors. We are not legal advisors. All the speakers that we bring uh, offer products and services, and we do not endorse any of them. However, we invite them because we have done businesses with them or we have relationships with them. So it's totally up to you. Uh, so do your due diligence. Also, on every investment, there is risk. And just like you, uh, as you know, massive capital. We are an owner, owners and operators of multifamily real estate and new construction. So I'm going to talk a little bit about us and our portfolio. What we do is we buy apartment buildings and help women and everybody else invest their money or their retirement accounts uh, in these assets offering double digit returns. Actually, uh, actually, we are in Texas, of course, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, and Austin. We have properties in Colorado, North Carolina, and Georgia as well. We have close to half billion dollars of assets under management. We uh, merged with a company, Realty One, last year, and they do all the new construction for retail spaces triple net we are a vertically integrated company so together we are close to the half billion dollars of assets under management uh, we also have our coaching program uh, where we of course help you become a gp by your own deals if you that's something that you'll be interested book a call with any of us we'll be more than happy to help you go over all the details also, if you are looking to start investing and you're not sure how or you have questions, book a call with us. Right now, we have two offerings. One is a new construction in Austin. We have, a, I think, one spot left, if I'm not mistaken. It's only three years. It's really good for retirement accounts because your money grows really quick. And that's what we want to oh, only three years hold, uh, 1.87 equity multiplier. And we also have a multifamily property in San Antonio, Texas. This is two, 204 units. Uh, great opportunity if you're looking to start getting some cash flow. Uh, this is a very... Uh, this is the butter and bread of multifamily where we buy the property, we add value, and we offer great returns to our investors. So if that's something that piques your attention, let us know, connect with us. We also have other properties that we cannot disclose on you unless you have a relationship with any of us. So book a call with us. Let, uh, let us help you. Let us get to know you. The more we know you, the more we can help you. And Maria, are yes. we? I think we're good. Sharon is here. Oh, okay. So I'm going to introduce our 
fabulous guest tonight. She is an internationally recognized as a financial literacy expert, keynote speaker, and business mentor. She is a five times New York best time selling author, successful entrepreneur, philanthropist, and enjoyed a 35 year career as a licensed CPA. She has advised two US presidents on the topics of financial literacy. Sharon, Sharon has co-authored the international bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and 14 other books in the Rich Dad series. In 2008, when the economy crashed, she was asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to help re-energize the teachings of Napoleon Hill. Her best-selling books with the foundation include Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, Think and Grow Rich for Women, and Success and Something Greater. She is also featured in the movie Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and on a national TV series, World's Greatest Motivators. In 2021, she titled Exit Rich, which was released to support entrepreneurs in building value and scalability in their businesses so they can be in the position of greatest potential. Her newest title, How Money Works, Works for Women was released in July in cooperation with Wealth Wave Media, a leading publisher of financial education materials in support of women taking control of their financial well-being. Oh my gosh, are you ready for our guest tonight, Miss Sharon Lecter? Hello, hello, hello. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I am absolutely delighted to be with all of you and was loving listening to the fact that I've got all these women that are investors and taking control of their financial lives. I'm going to be talking to the choir here. I love it. I love the fact that you guys are supporting each other and I love you're all so young. I love it. So first I want to say thank you to Lucy because Lucy is one of my clients and she um, is the one that introduced me to this incredible group and she is fantastic. I'm so proud of her and the success that she has and love listening to all of you and honored to be here. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about, you know, you guys already are starting to invest. My favorite word, by the way, is assets. So I want you all to write it down, the word assets. And then underneath that, I want you to say assets are sexy, right? Assets are sexy because they are you know, as we get older, we start sagging, dragging, tagging, right? So, but our assets keep growing. So assets are sexy and the older you get, the sexier they become. So yes, Maria, Mar thank you for the, writing those notes. And that's what gives you financial freedom. Okay, you are financially free when the income from your assets exceed your monthly expenses, it's, you know, and it doesn't have to be millions of dollars. Many of you are well on your way, if not there already, because you have real estate investments. And that's the beauty of real estate. Every millionaire on the in the world has either made their money in real estate or they hold their money in real estate. And so, you know, real estate is an incredible tool. And we talk about, you know, the types of assets we had to paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, intellectual property, which I believe a lot of you, if you haven't already written a book, you should, because what you've accomplished and what you've built is something that you can then share with other people. And that's intellectual property. It becomes an asset. So people can access your brilliance when maybe you're sleeping. All right. And you get paid for it. So there's, it's a beautiful thing, whether it be a book or an online course and all of us, you know, we, many of you have probably experienced something that stopped you on your tracks along the way. And 12 years ago, <clears throat> I lost my youngest son and I went into what you would call neutral. I lived my world of numbness for a couple of years and I stopped playing big. You know, I started the talking children's book industry and grew it around the world with little companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street. And then I, of course, wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad and built the Rich Dad um, empire with Robert. And in 10 years, we were in 110 countries, 50 languages, sold 36 million books. So really created and built the world's first and largest personal finance brand. And then I was asked to step in the Napoleon Hill Foundation in 2008 when we know what was happening in the economy. And so I'm the only person that built 
Rich Dad and got involved in reinvigorating the teachings of Napoleon Hill and helped re-energize that brand. And so it was a huge, huge compliment, huge, but also along with it came a huge responsibility. But what I loved about it was as I, I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19, and it gave me the opportunity to really make Think and Grow Rich more applicable to women because the original book was written in 1937 when really there were no women in business. And so I had the great opportunity to write Think and Grow Rich for Women. And I took the same principles because I do believe the steps of success are the same for men and women, but we think differently. We approach those steps differently. And so I took the original 13 steps and talked and highlighted successful women who used each of those steps in their career. And then I talked about how I use those steps in my own, my own journey. And then I had quotes. So I had over 300 women in the book and I loved it because, you know, when you, when you read it, you can read one story and say, well, that's not me. But the next one you go, oh, she can do it. So can I. And so that has been um, out for not quite 10 years, but it has just made a huge impact around the world. And what I love about it is that it, it makes us a community just like you have created a community here because, you know, there is nothing like girlfriends. Well, no matter what happens to us in our life, when we are in stress, who do we call our girlfriend, right? That's right. And so you guys have that opportunity here to support one another. And when my first book with the Napoleon Hill foundation was called three feet from gold, if any of you have read it, let me know in the chat. But um, in that we talk about your personal success equation. The personal success equation is no numbers, but you guys are all into numbers anyway. So this is a good group, a warm group. P plus T, your passion and your talent. Now passion, you hear about do what you love, love what you do. Well, in my case, my passion came from anger. And I'm still like that. Anytime I get mad about something, I start another company because the most successful businesses solve a problem or serve a need. And that's what you guys are doing. You're solving multi-housing, commercial needs, right? Um, and whatever your other businesses are. And that's how you create success by adding value. And so that passion plus talent, I was mad we weren't teaching kids about money in school. My talent was many, many years, more than I want to admit, in public accounting and lots of years in publishing. And so most of us stop there because we think we have to do it on our own, especially we women. You know, we have, we're the master of all trades. We got to do it ourselves. And true success comes from times A, the power of association, write down power of association, because what you have in this community is an incredible opportunity for expanding your associations, finding that next partner, finding somebody who can you can call if you have an issue because you know that they've been through it before. And that networking, that opportunity of association is really strong. When you look at your own team, do you have people on your team who are strong where you are weak? Do you have a mentor? One of my greatest joys is having clients that I can provide mentorship to because I've been where they want to go. I can introduce them to people, other associations. I can speed them around pitfalls because I've had a few along the way. And so it's really important to have that power of association, that mentorship. And most women agree that mentorship is important, but they hesitate to ask for help. And so I say, let's change our mindset. Instead of thinking it as asking for help, think of it as showing respect to someone who has gone down the path that you want to follow. And so it takes that, that feel of needy, neediness and scarcity and changes it to abundance and gratitude. And that's a beautiful way to think of it. And um, all of these things come together. So your passion, your talent, power of association, and then times a taking action. Now, I think that's probably not too much of a problem for this group, but taking action. How many times do we know what we're supposed to do? We don't do it. Now, I know for sure, because Lucy, when we talk about each month we get together, we talk about, let's try ABC. Well, before I get off the phone, she's already working on ABC. So she is a lady of action. And you're right, Brooke, that my next step is all of that comes together with a plus F, faith, faith in yourself, faith in what you're doing, faith that is needed and necessary. But way too often that F is actually 
fear, as Brooke indicated, fear that holds us back. And what happens is when you look at that entire equation, the association, the power of association, that faith and confidence in yourself go hand in hand. When I have a new client, we go through that process. And it's usually they don't have the right people in their arena and they're feeling lack of confidence. I'm not good enough. Their subconscious has that stinking thinking, you know, maybe saying even easy for her to say, maybe one of you've already thought that. All right. But it's something that keeps us from creating the success we deserve. So when you have the right people around you and you have a bad day, because we all have them, um, they won't let you stay there. And so it's really important if you go to personalsuccessequation.com or my website, SharonLector.com, you can pull down a free ebook that I've written, a worksheet that helps you walk through that formula for yourself. But, you know, when I made that decision two, two years into this, I thought, you know, I surely should retire after losing my son. And it was my associations that came to me and said, no, 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 no. You've got, you know, you can't do that. We need you. And I even heard my son in my ear say, get over it, mom. There's more for you to do. You're still here for a reason. And so I share this story because at that point in time, I launched a Facebook group called the Play Big Movement because I thought, you know, I'm going to get back out and play big again, but I don't want to do it alone. I want to share it with other people. That is when I started my one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And part of it, I, my, most of my mentors call me Mama Sharon. Um, and it kind of starts filling a little of the hole that's in my heart from losing my child. But each of us, I realize that. By sharing my story, I open up the opportunity for people to feel like they're not alone. Now, whatever has stopped you in your tracks in the past, it could have been a death, as in my case, a divorce, a financial setback, an illness, or a lack of zest. Sometimes we just don't know what our calling is. But whatever stops you in their track, you're still here, and you're still here for a reason. God made you. I hope it's okay that I get a little religious. God made you to be perfectly you, not me, not Brooke, not Maria, you. You were given the gift on this earth and you're here to make an impact. And the Play Big Movement is all about being number one in your field, living your legacy because your legacy is created every single day with every heart you touch and to create maximum impact. And this group, is doing that. You're supporting each other. So you're providing that power of association. And I heard that from the speaker, Jasmine, right before this, taking action. She's giving you opportunities. You share opportunities with, with each other and you encourage each other to continue moving because wealth is momentum, momentum of money. And, and certainly in the last couple of years, we've seen that momentum slow down with inflation and with higher interest rates. But you can still employ the the your money moving forward. The the trick is to know your numbers, and of course, this is I'm again speaking to the choir here. You know, know your numbers. As long as a deal is good, even if the interest rates higher than you want, if the numbers work, you've got a good deal, and cash flow is king. So it's really important to think about what it is. And I tell people all the time, sometimes we hold ourselves back. In fact, often we hold ourselves back, and it's like. Think about taking action because we get comfortable. Certainly with COVID, we got comfortable. And you know, the next greatest opportunity for you is not inside your comfort zone. It's outside your comfort zone. You need to stretch, right? And it's important for you to analyze what your core values are and where you want to invest. And thinking of real estate as a tool, right? When you people Financial planners talk about diversification. They talk about between paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and God love them. They're great at what they do. But truly diversification needs to be across asset categories, paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, intellectual property, commodities, and yet even, even digital currencies. They're all assets. But it's important to know what the allocation should be for you so that you you know, you prepare yourself for the, the greatest opportunity during a setback or a downturn so that you have cushion. But the goal is to, again, get that passive income. 
don't look for wages, look for passive income. Or don't look for, if you need more money, don't look for overtime or a second job. Look for buying, building, and creating income producing assets. Because once you put an asset in your asset column, it's your employee without the personality problems. It's there working for you and generating income for you. And you just keep make, giving it company with new assets until the point where you are financially free. And the most beautiful thing about it is you get your time back. And that's our only precious resource. You know, we can make money, lose it and make it back. But once your time is gone, it's gone. And I just turned 70 in January. So that's even more important to me. But my friend, I was actually quite depressed about it in December. And I, and I had to have a little talk with myself because I teach mindset and I'm going, you're not sh demonstrating mindset. And a friend of mine said, no, Sharon, you're not turning 70, you're Sharon 7.0. I like that. So 7.0. And that's, you know, again, mindset is everything. And particularly we tend as women to get a little hesitant when we are uncertain about something and we tend to withdraw. We tend to hide. In fact, I just saw a woman today at lunch and I hadn't seen her in a couple of years and had no idea she'd been battling cancer because she just kind of disappeared. And she's healthy now, but it was a it was such a poignant moment because if I I would have been there had I known, and so all of us we need to allow ourselves to rely on our networks to support us through good times and bad times, and it's really important to think about it. So you know I tell people all the time sometimes we have a mess it could be whatever stopped us in our tracks you know a, a mistake or a mess that we get through, but. When you get through it, turn that mess into your message. You know, yeah, maybe you had a bad real estate deal. Well, you know what? You can help other people prevent them from repeating it by sharing it and how you got through it. And that can often become your mission because you're helping other people. And by creating that mission, you become someone else's miracle. So from mess to message, to mission, to miracle. And you end up being number one in your field, live your legacy, and you create maximum impact that way. And so each and every one of you has a story to tell. And that story is something that can help other people. And realize it's not as women, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have you do this, but some of you were kind of probably know the story. Um Pen and pencil, I want you to answer this question. Who am I? With one word answers. Who am I? So when I did this, it was wife, mother, grandmother, author, entrepreneur. So now that you've done that, I want to say, how many of you actually on the list wrote your own name? Let me see. Uh, fewer than two out of 100 women will write their own name. Because as women, even the most successful women, so I'm I'm busting my own self here. I didn't write my name down. We judge ourselves through the roles we play. Mother, wife, sister, entrepreneur, writer. And that means we're giving up our power. We are judging ourselves through the eyes of others. And so... It took me way too many years. That's why I share this story with you because you're a lot younger than I am. When you become a better you, so write your name at the top of the list. When I became a better Sharon, I actually became a better wife, mother, grandmother, author, entrepreneur, because we tend to put ourselves last. And even you youngsters are better at it than some of us old broads, but you still need to focus on taking control of yourself and standing in your own power. And each and every one of you has a beautiful smile. I've seen them. I've seen a few of them sneak through here on the camera, but it's important because my message to women is so much, so important. And, you know, when it comes to money, many of you are on your way, if you're not already to financial freedom, but 80% of men die married. 80% of women die single. That's a startling statistic. 
And what happens, many women, they they wake up in their 60s, they've been married 25, 30 years, they're looking forward to retirement, their husband comes home and wants a divorce. Uh, wrong answer, right? Well, what happens, and this is pre prevalent in women that are baby boomers and even Gen Xers, you younger girls, I think are a lot smarter than this, but they re basically relied on their husband. They have no credit in their own name. And so they find themselves in their 60s with no financial well-being because they have no credit. And that's I mean, it's a mantra that I have. And that's why I wrote um, my most recent book that you mentioned, How Money Works for Women. And it's, it's actually kind of a fun book. It's four color, all right? And I take a woman from every decade of life, from 19 to 86, and talk about the things that women face financially that they don't know where to find help. And there's no other book like it. I'm so proud of it. We go from college to starting a business to um, working and realizing you have a child with special needs. You have to redefine how you work to take care of a, a child with autism and the, the example in the book. Um, there, another one where a woman has um, left a marriage, an abusive marriage with two children and has to start all over again. And you know, any abusive relationship usually has a component of financial abuse, cutting off the source. Those are things that are, is a real story, you know, so many of us suffer from abuse. And so it's important to have those resources and to not feel alone because particularly people who are subject to abuse, their power source is cut off. You know, their abuser is cutting them off of the rest of the world and you feel completely lost and adrift. And so we want to give them the resources to find themselves and help them rebuild. And then women that have prepared all along for an incredible retirement and their husband dies and they have mad credit. You know, that happens so often and they don't have their names on the accounts. They, have, they don't even know where the information is. Now, the year before I wrote Thinking for Rich for Women, I was at a birthday party and I'm not paying attention to time. So somebody needs to tell me when I'm getting close. But, um, you know, I, I was doing the research for Thinking Grow Rich for Women. And I said, how many of you, there are probably 14 of us around the table, sign your tax return without knowing what's in it. And so I want you guys to answer that question to yourself. How many of you sign your tax return without knowing what's in it? All of them raised their hand except one. And she was the a single woman and owned her own business. And that was startling to me, startling, you know, and that happens so often that women have, they just give up the control of the financial world. And it's so important to be aware of what you're doing. I love listening to Jasmine talking about their ROI and all the good stuff. I just love it. And I just want to support each and every one of you to continue because each of you has your own network of women. Reach out to them, share with them the opportunity to get to know and get to, into your group to learn because, you know, we say knowledge is power, but knowledge actually is awareness and awareness provides opportunity for power. Think about that. Knowledge creates awareness. Awareness makes you more aware of opportunities, opportunities where you can take action. And that's where you get your power and build your own power. But allow yourself to stand in your own success. Be proud of your own success. Don't compare yourself to someone else. I mean, I, you know, the, there's that acronym FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. And so, of course, during COVID, it was huge because nobody could go anywhere. But I said, I think I like JOMO, joy of missing out. Allow yourself to focus on the what you want to do and who's going to help you move forward. And when we talk about getting rid of that fear, um, I'll, I'll wrap up on this in my book, Outwinning the Devil, which was the sequel to Think and Grow Rich, but hidden away for 73 years. And I had the honor of bringing it out. But each, Napoleon Hill talks about ways to get past the fear. And the one first one is that drama, be definite of purpose. What is your definite purpose? Learning from adversity, not defining it. When we have a mistake, it's an occurrence. 
not a definition. Somebody write that down for me. A mistake is an occurrence, not a definition. And as women, we tend to carry them around like an old sack of potatoes. So it happened, learn from it and keep going forward. Not one successful person in the world has not experienced setbacks as part of the success. You just want to get through them quicker and not repeat them so that you get to the next success step. And so understanding that you have the opportunity to truly build on that success and learn from it. So definite purpose, mastery over self, having that self-discipline, learning from adversity, and then controlling your environment. Now you have created the greatest environment here as is this group of women with giant smiles, but environment, who do you hang out with? Are you hanging out with people who want you to succeed? Are you hanging out with people, maybe your own family, where they see you doing something constructive and they want to pull you back? Well, that's when we do something in cone of protection. Everybody put their hands up here. Come on, that I can see. Cone of protection, just cone of protection. That's when you understand that they're upset because you're. they see you're doing something and they're not. So you put this little cone of protection on and you realize, be gracious to them, keep doing what you need to do, limit your time with them so they don't pull you down because that's why the cone of protection helps because we are successful, but we're also have a lot of empathy. So we walk into a room and somebody's upset, we immediately feel it draining us. And when you can put on that cone of protection, you realize that you stand as an example to them to pull the pull up, put on their big girl pants and start working towards something better. And so allow yourself to be in environments that are supportive of you or put that cone of protection on when you know you're in an environment that may not be. And as part of that environment, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you reading? You know, years and years ago, I, I always had the news in the background and it was like, I was agitated. Boy, would I be that way now, even tenfold. But I just turned off the news. And it made a big difference because I wasn't actively uh -huh. listening to it, but my subconscious was. And it was absorbing all that negativity. So pay attention to what you're putting in your mind and in your subconscious. And then control your time. Are you spending your time or are you investing your time? And Though as you get more assets in your ba balance sheet in your asset column, you get time back. And that time can be used to help others find the resources that they need, the knowledge, the wisdom, the education that they need to help create more time for them. Because the more time you have, the more you can do and support other people. You know, I was raised by a father that every night he would ask me, Sharon, have you added value to someone's life today? He's been gone a long time, but I still ask myself that every night. And would not the world be a much better place if we all focused on helping other people every single day? And I'm here for q and A. I I think there were, if someone has a question for me, I'm all here. Yes, we, we do have um, some, some folks who uh, are, are going to ask some questions. So those of you uh, who haven't put the questions in the chat, feel free to do that right now. And uh, we can go ahead and ask some questions. McGinna, you have your hand raised if you want to unmute. Thank you. I didn't know the rules, so I just raised my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they taught us something right in Albania during communism, ask permission. So it kind of works. So good to see you, Sharon. We met at Ladies 10X two years ago in August. We have pictures together and I brag about you all the time and people open doors for me just because I have a picture with you. <laughs> so thank you for that. Power of association at work, good. <laughs> and I learned something else the other day from another mentor of mine and you're one of them, but this other mentor of mine said the process of edification because I am thinking how how do people do things? And then I asked this person, how did you get this fund to be like 40, 50 billion when, you know, you were in the early stages and he's like building other people up. That's powerful. So um, thank you again for, for being you, for how you show up in the world. Uh, grateful to all the women who made this happen. And Lucy, I'm super excited for us to hang out in a book very soon. 
And my question for you, Sharon, is what would be the one book that we should all read that could change our lives? What would be your favorite or the one that you would absolutely recommend? Well, um, thank you for that question. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking about my book, so I'll, I'll give you a multi-book answer. How's that? Because I think you, people are at different places in their life. So if you feel like you're being held back and you can't figure out what's holding you back, um, I would read out Winning the Devil. All right. If you are looking for um, help with understanding basic financial concept, how money works for women. If you are looking for life lessons, all right, obviously Think and Grow Rich and Think and Grow Rich for Women are great books. But I also like Dale Carnegie's How to Win and Influence People, because that's really a life book on uh, understanding people and communication. And so and there's so many more. I mean, the Ultimate Gift by Jim Stovall. He's a bl blind man, and he started Blind TV, which kind of sounds like a misnomer, but he's an incredible man. He's written close to 30 books, but he wrote a book called The Ultimate Gift, which is a parable, which is such a great book about being a mentor, not an enabler to the next generation, the younger generation. And I just, it's a tiny book but it's been made into a movie and it's just an incredible story for helping others see the value of contribution, the value of giving back, being, you know, not looking for a friend because you get friends because you become a friend, you know, giving instead of getting. And then of course I love Bob Berg. Go Giver is a really good book too. So how's that for a one book answer? <laughs> I, I love it because you're a woman. And of course, I wasn't expecting an answer. I came in with no expectations. <laughs> I knew it was going to be an overflow of generosity. Thank you again so much to you and the ladies. And I'm so happy to see 100 women in this room tonight. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Yes, thank you, Magana. I'm going to add another book for you because this I think that you actually asked me to talk about this and I didn't speak about it specifically. Exit Rich is a book I did a couple of years ago with Inc. Magazine. And for all of you building your businesses, it's really important to make sure you're building a business, not a job. And in this book, we go through how to build a business, take your successful business and make it sustainable, scalable, and saleable. So, and anything I, if you, any of these books you want, if you order them through my website, I'll autograph them for you. If you just put it in the notes, um, go to SharonLector.com. But Exit Rich is an incredible tool to help people make sure that they are getting their business so that it is scalable and saleable. Or, you know, if you want to give it to your kids, you need to build the structure into the business. We get all excited about the sales and the products or the real estate, and we don't build the structure and it becomes a house of cards. I want you to build a cinder block foundation that's going to help your business truly scale. So. Well, thank you so much for that generous offer too, Sharon. And we have another question. Alex, if you'd like to unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and ask Sharon your question. Hello, Sharon. It's lovely to be in this group and it's lovely to meet you as well. Thank you so much for sharing a world of wisdom. Thank you. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about wisdom. I'm a multifamily owner. And I'm an immigrant as well to this country. And when we came to this country, my mother and I, we had two forks and one spoon and nothing else. We didn't own anything in our apartment. And now I'm an, a multifamily owner and I'm teaching my residents how they can do it as well. Plus, I have a heart to wake up people's conscience to God's truth about their lives so that they can succeed in health, wealth and relationships. And I'm doing everything myself. I'm looking for that community. I'm looking to find people that can help me. Um, but I have very, very limited time. And I'm just curious, how did you go from, it was just an idea, to making the connections that you made and to getting to the level that you are when I feel so maxed out and I'm trying to get there. I feel like a little snail and I, I'm super ambitious like a lion, but I'm moving like a little tiny snail. 
So let me, I'm going to answer you with a a couple of stories. All right. Because it's really important to understand the importance of power of association because we can't do it all our own. And what happens is you're trying to do everything on your own. It is very slow, which means it is very time consuming and you don't have time for anything else. So when I met the inventor of the first Talking Children's Book was back in 1987, probably before some of you were born, and kids didn't have electronics. And so we had this book with a sound strip down the side. And we said, how can we get parents to trust us? This electronic thing, you know, they're going to be afraid of it. And so that was really when I learned the power of association. We did deals with little companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics. And that immediately allowed trust. It, it, edification, the word we used earlier, it edified us in the eyes of parents. So it allowed us to explode that company around the world. Yes, we had to pay big licensing fees, but it was well worth it because our goal was to impact people around the world and we did it. Same thing. So when I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it was act, the book was actually written as a marketing tool to sell the board game cash flow. We didn't realize it was going to take on a life of its own and it end up, we wrote 15 books over a 10 year period. But during that period, we grew exponentially because of the power of association. We edified um, network marketing from a standpoint of passive income. It was never on our business plan, but Amway found it and they spread it all over the world. We, we, we needed strong support on publishing. So Warner Books came to us but we'd already established our presence and our success. So they had to pay us to participate with them. And we ended up doing the very first joint venture in publishing because we had established our, the, the credibility and we edified ourselves. And so we were partners. And so by doing that, we again had that power of association when we wanted to go into um, infomercials, which I, by the way, hate, but it was the right thing for to do as the business. So I said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it with the top company, Time Life. They paid us to do our infomercials, All right. So again, you have to earn the right, but also you have you have an incredible story. You, know, you had the mess of coming with two forks and a spoon, or two spoons and a fork, whatever you said. That, and then you became. You are now a multifamily owner. That story is powerful, and so turn that into your message so that you can attract other people. And you know there are probably people in your community who would love to learn from you, who would come in and support you and help you do some of the stuff so you get some of your time back. You know, one plus one is eleven, not two. And so having that opportunity and you're in the right room, even though it's a Zoom room, you're in the right room. You got a lot of people here that are willing to support you. I don't know where you are geographically, but there are probably people in your area that would love to support you and learn from you. So hopefully that helps. Love that, Sharon. Love that. Uh, We have one question in the chat and then a few more standing by. So if you have some time for us, I'd love to continue to go through them if you're available. Certainly. certainly. Great. Great. So uh, Karen asked, after your son's passing, how did you conquer your daily tasks when you didn't have the will to? Girlfriends. Um, I had a, we, my husband and I actually were in Vegas. We live in Arizona when we got the news. And so we literally had to drive. We couldn't even hug each other. We had to drive home. Um, but when I got here, one of our dear friends was waiting for me and she spent the night on the floor next to my bed. She wouldn't leave me. And I had friends every single day come stay with me for over 30 days. Um, and my my husband and I, you know, a lot of marriages don't survive the loss of a child. And we had to respect each other because he that's what I needed. But he wanted to be by himself. He didn't want anybody touching him. He didn't want anybody talking to him. And so we had to respect each other enough to be able to deal with it. And my, my girlfriends not only came to be with me, they provide us food for, gosh, two months. But it was... You know, that gel of having people survive and supporting you and being willing to let you sit there in silence, but they were there. And so it's it's really hard because what happens when we are fearful, one of two things happens. You're paralyzed or you're motivated. 99% of us are paralyzed by fear and grief. 
And we have to figure out how to turn that fear and grief into fuel, into focus. And then you have the opportunity to turn it into faith. But when you are in the thick of it, you have to allow yourself to grieve. You know, there's a definition of worry, and it's also, I think, applicable to grief. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. And when you're in grief, you are focusing on everything horrible in your life, and it becomes a cesspool. And sometimes we have to do that for a bit. Certainly losing a child is that way. And, but at some point, you start having enough people around you, and you start realizing you start looking up instead of looking down. You know, when you're when you're fearful, you want to turn off the lights and get under the cover and you just fester. And at some point you got to open the shades. You start looking up and those opportunities are there for you. So just the biggest challenge is to not be alone. Because I call it my own personal rototiller when I'm upset about something, when I'm worrying, it just goes around and around and around and around. And I make myself physically sick. And what I'm worrying about may or may not happen. Or I'm worried about something that happened that I can't change. And so I catch myself. I happen to be a champion warrior. I don't know if there's any other warriors in this Zoom room with me, but I'm a good one. And so I still have that. And I catch myself. And I go, okay, Sharon. Stop focusing on what I don't want and let's focus on what I do want. And it's truly magic. It does change your subconscious, your folk, the whole law of attraction. And all of a sudden you start attracting things that are going to help you get out of that state of grief, worry. But don't beat yourself up. I mean, if I didn't mourn and grieve my son, I would not think very highly of myself. But at the same time, I had to realize that I was still here. And that, that voice that I heard in my ear from him, you're still here for a reason. Get over it, mom. Oh, so typical of him. Get over it, mom. But I I, sh I share that set with myself because I said, I have a choice. Every one of us, every one of you, we are here right now because of the choices we made before today. If you want something different, you want something more, you want something better, you simply need to start making different choices today. The power of decision. You made a decision to be in this room tonight, and I hope that you are happy that you were here. But what are you going to learn? What action are you going to commit to so that this hour that we've been together or close to gives you a gift that you can apply immediately in your own life. That was so wonderful. Candace, Thank I'm you. cutting you off. My turn. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So first of all, Sharon, we're so grateful for you to be here. It's such an honor. I've heard you speak at Grant Cardone's event and best her in Arizona. Super grateful. It's such a major honor. Um, two questions. One, what would you say what actions have made the biggest impact in your success? And two, what would you tell your younger self? Okay. <laughs> um, let me go to the first one. The When I made the decision to leave public accounting at 25, it was because I was working incredibly long hours. And all of a sudden, I, my entrepreneurial parents looked a whole lot smarter. And um but I, I, I had this opportunity to leave public accounting and, and I went back to my condo with the old yellow legal pad because this was in the mid 70s. So there was no PCs, no cell phones. And I did the old yellow pros and cons, right? Didn't help me a bit because I was very successful in my career, but I also had this opportunity to become an entrepreneur and own a piece of the rock. So my hand took off across the top of the page because I couldn't make a decision and it said, why not? And that is still my mantra today. Why not do something different? Why not take the path less traveled? Why not solve a problem or serve a need? As I said, even now in my in 70 years old, when I get mad about something, I start a new company. You know, in the middle of COVID and all the negativity, I started a program. This a daily message. It's called eight daily ATM, daily affirmations, tips, and mentorship. 
abundance so that people have that positive influence to start or end their day with. And it's something that I've now, I'm, you know, I don't know, 1700 of them or something, but I do it so that I can provide an opportunity, not just to say what's wrong with the world, but here's something that can help you get past it. And it's literally like eight bucks. So it's very inexpensive. Um, if you go to atm.sharonlector.com, you'll find more information about it. But it's something that, you know, solve a problem, serve a need, right? And if you're not you, who? And it's about taking action, identifying something and taking action. It may be something you love. It may be something that makes you mad, but it gives you the opportunity to do something about it. And when you do something that helps someone else, you get tenfold back. So hopefully that answers that question. And the, what would I tell my younger self? So I often will get this question when there's a panel of people and I was asked to go last because Brooke, I... I couldn't, I, I can give you advice for a younger woman, but I would not be who I am today had I not been through all of the successes and failures and losses that I have. And so it's hard for me to ever, you know, obviously if I could go back and not lose my son, that I would change. But I was raised by parents who told me I could accomplish anything I wanted to accomplish. I was raised by parents who talked about money at dinner, and I didn't realize the gift that that was until I got out into the real world. But I have a 43-year marriage. I have cherished children and grandchildren. I wouldn't, you know, if I could save my son, I would, but I can't, I don't want to change anything because I wouldn't be who I am today. And I have the opportunity to share my story, to impact people around the world. So younger women, why not? Do something that inspires you. Take action. Be the CEO of your own life. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. And if you're feeling that you're not good enough, then find a mentor that can tell you how wonderful and how fabulous you are because God created you to be you, no one else. That's great. Dr. Makes some really loud noise. Woo! Okay, I'll be quiet. I got out of my system. Go ahead, Candice. <laughs> Go. Okay, there were a couple other ladies, and I know you've been waiting. I, I think we have time for maybe one more question before we're at the top of the hour. So I'm sorry, everyone. If you let's just do. Let's do these questions. two with the with their hands raised. Sharon, if you're okay on time. Sure. Okay, okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, we have Nancy and then Debbie. Nancy, if you want to come off uh, mute and ask your question. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. Okay, there we are. Um, hi, Sharon. Uh, it is so good to be on this. I met you, like, I think it was two years ago in Arizona at the Women of Impact Innovation International oh, event. And um, I thought, and that I thought you were fabulous, fantastic. Um, and so my question is, I actually live in the DC metro area and I have been a real estate agent for 28 years. And I've moved from just doing residential real estate to really focusing on multifamily units. Because after I lost all my money, that's my focus now. In 2008, when the crash happened, it dragged me off the cliff with it, and I lost $5 million. And then I realized, I evaluated my experience, and I realized multifamily is where I needed to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> because, you know, just the experience is not good enough. You have to evaluate the experience in order gotta learn, gotta, to gotta from learn it. from it. You bet. You got to learn from it. Yep. Yeah. So my question to you is, I have been focused, uh, I think it's since 2000, maybe 14, in teaching and providing information to individuals about how to create the passive income and generational wealth by buying the buildings. Sharon, uh, usually I'm a go-getter. I do everything myself. I don't ever ask for help, but it wasn't until recently when I met Forbes Riley and she's like, you can't do everything, Nancy. You sometimes have to ask for help. So here I am now 
with all these people on here that I don't know. I'm asking for help. I need some help. <laughs> I I don't know if it's help or guidance or uh mentorship. I need I need something, Sharon, to 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 push me back. Cause after I lost the five million dollars, I was paralyzed with fear for three years. I didn't do anything for three years because I was like Everything you did brought you here to Brokeville. You've lost everything. So clearly you don't know what to do. But now I do, but I'm still a little fearful in in the movements that I do. And well, I don't want to be, a, go ahead. Well, the first step is to be open and vulnerable about it because there are a few people on this in this Zoom room, I think, that probably can feel your pain because they probably went through something similar in 2008. So you're not alone. Um, my husband and I lost some, you know, multi-million dollar commercial property, never laid on a payment with some investors, but the bank decided they wanted the building and it didn't, it failed to meet the loan to um, value ratios. So, you know, we made a lot of money on the building over the years from income, but it was not a happy occurrence. But it's again, you have so much knowledge and you have ability, you can share it, but you're staying by yourself. So reach out. I mean, I have a mentoring program for all of you that are on this line. I'm assuming this community is here to mentor you and support you. You can go to SharonLector.com to see about my mentoring program or go through um, the, the leaders of this organization. Ask Lucy. You know, we're very, very proud of her and what she's creating. Um, but I think it's really important for you to be open because you've got people here right here on this screen right now that can help you and support you. And that's, I think the whole reason behind this organization, I would assume yeah. is to provide this environment of support. Yes. Yes, it is. And, and thank you for your question. So thank our last you. question is going to be from Debbie. Uh, Debbie, if you'd like to unmute yourself, please. Yes. I'm um, Sharon. One thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have done so much. I mean, I, let's just say I was in college when Rich Dad, Poor Dad came out. So <laughs> I I just was blown away by what it did for my life. And I just so appreciate everything that you've done for women everywhere. So well, I actually, thank you. yeah, definitely. Oh my goodness. I'm so, um, I had to write down what I had questions about because I'm just so excited and I get hyped. So there are actually two questions. One, I've been in financial advising for a while. And I'm finding that women are divorced in their 50s. Um, their kids are grown. They're empty nesters. And literally, they had no control of their finances. They literally have no retirement. Um, what kind of advice would you give these women? Okay. <laughs> Okay. How money yeah. works for women. <laughs> there was a, a gal in here of exactly hope. All right, She's in her 60s and ends up divorced and has not been in control of her money. So it's really important to think about, um, how, you are in a, a perfect position. So par, as a woman financial advisor, you are in the minority. However, when a woman um, loses her husband, either through death or divorce, 75% of the time she changes financial advisors because most financial advisors are egotistical, Creeps. I was going to use yep. another word. <laughs> Present it. Anyway, they even my husband and I went to one and the guy sat there and looked at my husband the whole time. He knew who I was. It's like, uh, this isn't happening. But most women won't speak up. And so they feel like they are shut. If they if they if they ask a question, they're treated with disrespect. So you have an opportunity Debbie, to be that person that is there as a sounding board to help women structure what they need to do and provide opportunities through your resources with this group for women to have, you know, I don't know what kind of funding you guys accept on your various projects, but, you know, Grant now has a fund that for $1,000, you can get into one of his deals. So, you know, providing a resource for women want to invest. Women are better investors, but they're afraid to take action. And so the way you create an environment to help women feel um, a little safer. And I love somebody, I flew by, but somebody said she is a safe space. So I thought that was kind of a wonderful comment. So, um, but you have a huge opportunity because women 
by 2030, women, women will, will be in control over $30 trillion, almost two thirds of the wealth of this nation. And with that comes a responsibility to understand how to receive it, how to invest it, how to make it grow and how to keep it for future generations. And they need your education, your, your, your support and them understanding the choices they need to make. And they want women advisors. So fantastic opportunity. The company that I did this book with, Wealthwave, they have a higher percentage of women investors than any other firm in the nation, which is one of the reasons I did the book with them, because I want to focus on helping women. And that's something that we all need to do. So thank you for the question. Uh, absolutely. And I had a quick secondary question. This is for me. I'm going to pick on your visionary financial mind. What markets are you excited about right now and into the future? Oh, well, multifamily, I think, is absolutely the way to go. Um, I think you know we're looking right now at some multifamily. Pro a lot of my um, investments are in long-term community developments. So they're 10 to 15-year plays. But we do have quite a few quite a few investments in syndications for multifamily housing. And I think a lot of it is location, location, location. I don't, you know, right now I, I'm sticking Arizona, Texas, and Florida just because of the fact that, uh, and in Arizona is even getting a little um, more purple. They're not nearly as landlord friendly as they used to be. But I think it's really important to understand the resources and the and and the support and really have the right kind of property managers as well. So, but yeah, multifamily is definitely um, with what's happening in the world. We're seeing a lot of people getting out of their homes because their mortgages are, are adjusting and they're not able to keep their home and they're going into apartments. So, you know, well, Grant only does class A buildings. I tend to look B's and C's because from an inflation perspective, they're inflation proof. So that's kind of my my gig, but just as a side bit. And I, I know we're done, but Lucy, you had your hand up. And since you had your hand up, did you wanna say something? I wanna say thank you, Sharon. I really, really appreciate it. I can never get enough of you. You know that. <laughs> Lucy invited me to join you guys tonight. So give Lucy some some love. <laughs> no, thank yes. you. Thank you, Shara. I mean, it's just wonderful. Everything you have to share with all of you that, I mean, it's just not, it's, it just felt like something that I, I had to do, you know, it just, you know, it just came through in the heart, uh, sharing all your knowledge, your wisdom and spending that, you know, last year, actually it's almost, uh, I think it's almost a year since we spent, you know, those three days of the retreat at your, uh, the, um, Cherry Creek, Lodge, uh, Lodge, it was just amazing. I mean, I there were so many breakthroughs, so many first ones, I'm sure uh, you can remember. And so it's just been an amazing um, opportunity. And I'm very blessed and honored that you are my mentor. Uh, the question um, I saw is regarding one of the ATMs that I received, which talks about courageous acts and I'm sure you know we've been talking about actions and taking the action but how uh, I'm sure you had a moment when you had a difficulty you know having that courage to take the action and uh, can you tell us about um, you know sure. an experience you have some you know on that thank you Lucy um, thank you for those kind comments I appreciate that I love you I'm so very thrilled to have you as a client as a friend and um, I think, you know, courage is not the absence of fear, it's acting in spite of the fear. And I am a great procrastinator. I used to say I did, you know, I just perform better under pressure, but I am a procrastinator. And I've actually, I'm thinking, I'm doing a podcast and I've been avoiding it because I want, the topic of the podcast is avoidance. <laughs> and I've been avoiding doing it. Hello, Sharon. Um, but we tend to put off tomorrow, right? Well, tomorrow never comes. And so I end up, I tend to get to the point where I'm so aggravated with myself that I take action. That is not the healthy way to do it. But the healthy way to do it is to have an action plan and commit to accomplishing one step at a time, right? And 
you know, there are, you have to also look it in the face, you know, look in the mirror and say, what is it about this that's keeping me from taking action? Is it my lack of confidence? Is it fear, fear of failure? Is it fear of success? You know, and be honest with yourself as to what might be causing the resistance, because that resistance, that avoidance is the issue, not your desire, not your, something inside of you is keeping you from taking action. And that's why you want a mentor. You want people around you because they can sometimes identify it better than you can. And, you know, the, the world is your oyster. You know, I say the, the sky's the limit. No, the sky's not the limit. There is no limit to your success. You just keep on building and allow yourself to have the right team around you. And sometimes the mentor who got you here is not the mentor that can get you to where you deserve to be. So no, I, sure. I, I do actually invite all of you to go to my website, SharonLector.com. I have a weekly newsletter. It's free. Um, you know, I talk about what's happening in the world of money. I have a monthly webinar called Let's Talk Money, where I talk about everything that's happening that you need to know right now as it relates to um, real estate, as it relates to stocks, as it relates to cryptocurrency, as it relates to tax reporting, um, so that people can stay in the know. But I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Lucy. This is Lucy's gift to all of you guys, and I appreciate you doing that. So. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Lucy. This Love is you. what makes super powerful because when we meet amazing women like Sharon, we have mentors, friends. That's what makes this community so powerful because we don't keep them for ourselves. We share them. So thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Uh, so thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, I have a couple announcements, ladies. Uh, I don't know if you have any other words. Um, but we're gonna wrap it up here. For those who wanna hang around, we're gonna do breakout rooms, but I just wanna share a couple announcements really quick. Um, for those who are in Houston, we're having an event on Saturday about raising capital. So when I came to this industry, I was like, who doesn't need money? If I become really good at raising capital, it's going to open the doors for me. So if you're interested, uh, if you're in Houston, let us know. If you're not in Houston, let us know where do you want this event to happen. Uh, Candace has an event in uh, Aventura with Elena Cardone. Uh, so if you're going to be there, uh, just sign up, reach out to us. We're going to share on the WhatsApp group, the Facebook group. So just let you know, it's going to be on the 19th. And stay tuned because there is uh, something really cool happening at She. We're going to reveal very soon. Just stay tuned. There's something very special happening at She. Uh, also, our WhatsApp group, I put it on the chat several times, Facebook. So join us everywhere. We are on all the social media. And last but not least, we have our amazing speaker, Maria Invita Jordan. Super excited for her. She is uh she's a TikTok influencer, but she also just recently quit her job to live on the road to teach financial literacy in schools. So we're going to hear her story, how she is teaching this to children and, and how we can do the same thing as she's doing. So she's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to hear her community is everything. And I want to thank you all for coming. I know that it's hard to take away from our busy lives and, and be in a community of women, but we are so thankful that you are here. Please come, please be engaged in the whatsapp share your information we want to connect we only grow when you grow too so we want to want to share your wins and share what you're doing so thank you all for coming tonight and don't forget to get some she merch got some, my hat on today so we love you all and thank you for being here tonight thank you ladies thank you so much have a good night <laughs>